Welcome to Quills and Cliffhangers, the podcast that reviews the best of vintage and modern literature. Quills and Cliffhangers is produced by Steve's Book Decor, your resource for decorative book sets for home, office, and weddings. And now, the host of our program, Jane, our Director of Marketing, with today's show. Hello everyone and welcome to today's show. Recently I found an intriguing old novel entitled The Crime of Sylvester Bonar. It's an antique hardcover book printed in 1918 with a substantial 310 pages. When I picked up this book, I realized that although I recognized the name of this famous writer, I had never read his books. I decided that it was time to explore the life and work of the celebrated author Anatole Franz. Franz was born in Paris in 1844. He grew up surrounded by books, for his father owned a bookstore. Upon graduation from school, Anatole helped his family run the business. This immersion in the thoughts of great authors from an early age no doubt inspired him to build a writing career of his own. Photographs of Anatole show him attired in a dark, elegant suit after the fashion of the late 19th century. The spark of energy in his eyes reveals that he is thinking about something intriguing. Even his dapper mustache has a personality of its own. In some portraits, the waxed tips spring away from his face like pointing arrows. Anatole became a prolific author. He received the Nobel Prize in 1921, three years before his death at the age of 80. He had a robust personal life as well, including two marriages and a number of dramatic love affairs. Anatole's stories have survived the test of time. Many writers, including George Orwell of 1984 fame, have praised his writing as classic and suspenseful. How fortunate that of all the books written by Anatole France, I happened upon his very first novel, The Crime of Sylvester Bonar. This book marks Anatole's transition from a poet to an author of fiction. This book was published in 1881 when Anatole was 37 years old. The story is about a man named Sylvester Bonar, an elderly, kind-hearted historian who lives with his cat in a home filled with books. That sounds rather autobiographical, doesn't it, knowing that Anatole's father owned a bookstore. The plot is about Sylvester's journey from Paris to Sicily in search of a rare medieval book called the Golden Legend. During his travels, he commits a crime to help a young woman in distress. What better way to read Anatole's first novel than in a hardcover edition printed a century ago? This charming antique book practically transports us back in time to the era of horse-drawn carriages and steam-powered engines. Anatole is fondly remembered for his many witty sayings about life and love. Here are ten of his most famous quotes. Number 10. To accomplish great things, we must not only act, but also dream. Not only plan, but also believe. When I hear words like plan and accomplish, I think of the core principles of project management. 
for example, setting measurable goals and tracking progress. I believe that Anatole is reminding us of step one in project management. All accomplishments spring from an idea, a wish, in his words, a dream. To bring your dream to life, you must believe in yourself. Number nine. Existence would be intolerable if we were never to dream. Ah, that word, dream again. Here Anatole explores the concept that life should consist of more than one's mundane day-to-day -day tasks. To live our lives fully, we must have hope. And that hope manifests itself in our dreams. Number eight. One thing above all gives charm to men's thoughts, and this is unrest. A mind that is not uneasy irritates and bores me. This is a theme in numerous stories published between the 1880s and the end of the 1920s. F. Scott Fitzgerald's protagonists often exclaim, in an amusing manner, that they're bored. If you've read This Side of Paradise, the Great Gatsby, and Bernice bobs her hair. You know what I mean. Fitzgerald's people are desperate for someone interesting to walk in the door and liven things up. Jules Verne's characters as well simply can't sit still. They must do something big and bold, often on a whim, like travel around the world in 80 days, or explore the oceans in that newfangled contraption called a submarine. Robert Louis Stevenson also crafted marvelous page-turning adventure stories by answering the urgent question, and then what happened? Just like our great-great-great-grandparents, we seek the company of people, in real life and in fiction, who are gifted with lively minds that entertain us. Number seven, the greatest virtue of man is perhaps curiosity. This observation ties into Anatole's previous comment about having an uneasy mind. It is our curiosity that leads us to develop scientific theories, discover medical breakthroughs, and even explore the stars. Number six, an education isn't how much you have committed to memory or even how much you know. It's being able to differentiate between what you do know, and what you don't. Anatole's comment reminds me of the famous saying that a college degree is a license to learn. Number 5. Nine-tenths of education is encouragement. How fortunate we are as we travel through life to meet many people who help us to learn, build, grow, and achieve. Number four, it is human nature to think wisely and act in an absurd fashion. Anatole shrugs off out of character behavior with his usual charm. I will leave it up to you to imagine what bizarre things 19th century people could have done to earn the label absurd. Number three, if 50 million people say a foolish thing, it is still a foolish thing. In the 1500s, People believed that lemmings fell from the sky during storms. Yes, lemmings, the same little creatures that are rumored to jump off cliffs. It doesn't matter who invented this absurd story. I can visualize Anatole twiddling the edges of his sleek mustache, rolling his eyes, and advising us to think for ourselves. Number two. Until one has loved an animal, a part of one's soul remains unawakened. In the crime of Sylvester Bonar, the hero owns a cat. Or as any cat owner will tell you, the cat owns him. Let's conclude this list with this breathtakingly panoramic statement from the immortal Anatole France. Number 1. The truth is that life is delicious horrible, charming, frightful, sweet, bitter, and that is everything. Thanks for tuning in. On behalf of Steve's Book Decor, 
I look forward to visiting with you again. Until next time, remember to keep your nose in a book and your thoughts in the clouds. The Quills and Cliffhangers podcast is produced by Steve's Book Decor, sellers of fine collectible antique and vintage books. Our store is open 24-7 for your shopping convenience at www.stevesbookdecor.etsy.com.